Hello everyone, today's topic is hemolytic anemia. It is a form of anemia in which there is hemolysis or the abnormal breaking down of the RBC that is a red blood cell occurs. So, that condition is allergic, that condition is called anemia. So, the breaking down of the RBC or we say hemolysis, the name is indicating that lysis means break and hemo means hemo, uh, so that uh, breaking down of the RBC. So, it normally the RBC have the lifespan that is 120 days and this uh, uh, in per day in our body in per second uh, there are 2 millions of RBCs are formed that is the process of erythropoiesis and to, per second. So, per day it is the amount is very large. So, if there is production is going on same in the same time per day also some of the destruction is takes place. So, destruction is called eruptosis. So, the some of the RBC that is old RBC or otherwise say aged RBC these are destroy in our body. The, the destruction is 1 percent of total productions of the RBC. So, it is per day this our body is doing both productions work and also and uh, the eruptosis process. So, both the in when the productions and the destructions of the RBC is well balanced, then our body move the body is uh, smooth, uh, body is healthy. But when any conditions, suppose our bone marrow cannot produce the amount of the uh, cannot produce that much amount of uh, RBC, uh, so that the RBC destruction rate is more as compared to the production rate. So in that case, due to the RBC destruction, then the hemoglobin level decreases. As hemoglobin level decreases, the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is decreases due to the insufficient of oxygen to different part of the body. Then the body is hypoxated, and that condition is arises that is called the anemia. So, our body uh, try to uh, try to compensate the destruction that so uh, as much that is compensate uh, uh, compensate the destruction. So, in that case hemolysis and uh, that we do not call it hemolytic anemia. anemia. If the destruction that is increases where production is decreases then that condition we call it is uh, hemolytic anemia. Anemia and our body have a capacity, it can also produce 8 to 10 times more, 8 to 10 times produce RBCs also. So, how this RBCs are formed the, by the erythropoiesis process, the, erythro, the erythropoiesis process that is takes place in the bone marrow, from the vein bone marrow, the poor erythroblast that is the precursor cells uh, for the precursor cells for the blood uh, RBC, the pro erythroblast, then it is the erythroblast and again into the reticulocytes and after that this healthy RBC or uh, you say RBCs are formed and it is takes two days uh, for the formation of the RBC and this RBC is biconcave strep. We already discussed due to the biconcave surface of the RBC, so it has more surface area to bind the uh, hemoglobin uh, in within it. So the, uh, uh, the and also another uh, important thing is that due to the more cellular structure, he can move in the uh, his body is very flexible and it can move in the narrow uh, narrow uh, diameter of the capillaries also. So the biconcave structure and if you see the thickness uh, that is the diameter of 8 to 10 micro uh, micro micron and thickness is 2.5 micron. And the, within our blood cells and uh, this uh, due to this uh, due to its uh, flexible structure it can move in our capillary. So, uh, throughout after formation of the RBC uh, by the erythropoiesis process then it could move in our body. So, in uh, it's move in the blood uh, the river uh, as you call the blood uh, throughout the uh, throughout the 120 days it is moving in our body. So, when it is passing through the different uh, different organs, um, uh, different organ, then maybe uh, that when it goes to the spleen, so the so spleen in spleen, the uh, the diameter of the sinus uh, venous sinus that is present in the spleen, the diameter is very narrow. That is uh, less than two two micron. Okay. So that when the old RBC, otherwise you say the damaged, uh, or damaged uh, aged RBCs are passes through the spleen, the spleen has the capability to filter the damage or old RBC. So that these uh, old RBC are trapped by the 
spleen and in spleen there is a macrophages are there these are the engulfing otherwise this is a phagocytosis process they uh, engulf or uh, eat the old and damaged rbc and after uh, and uh, remove the healthy rbc so this uh, this is a normal process may normal mechanism that is carried out in our body uh, every day production is taking and every day destruction also going on in our body but some of some in some few cases when uh, there is and there is a cause uh, there is cause like autoimmune or diseases conditions and on if the bone marrow is not capable uh, bone marrow has any pathological conditions and inherited conditions like sickle cell anemia and thalassemia that case also the bone marrow is not capable or uh, in uh, to produce uh, as much as rbc that is go uh, to compensate the uh, destruction that so uh, that uh, uh, and also some of the medicine like rifampicins and heparin uh, if you using that medicine for a long period then there is a, there is a chances of hemolysis and also some of the lead poisoning venom that also uh, that also cause hemolytic anemia because breaking down of the rbc is more takes place in this in this cases so that what happened the our, the uh, the our body uh, is a malicious process takes place so our body uh, loss number of rbc so as rbc is uh, less so hemoglobin level is decreases so this so anemic condition will be arises so already we discussed the sign clinical features of anemia that is one is fatigue fatigue it means uh, the uh, insufficient oxygen to the different tissues and shortness of breath that is the dyspnea and that also seen and the tachycardia that is the heart rate increases and there is another features that is mostly seen in the hemolytic anemia that is jaundice that is the yellow colorations of the uh, sclera and the body body um, nails so it is arises due to the excessive breaking down of the rbc we will discuss in the, uh, in the letter and also there is a large spleen the spleen also uh, became enlarged if you go for examination then you will find so these are the clinical features and these are the cause by which the uh, hemolysis or uh, more more and more destruction of the rbc is going on so the uh, the when our body breaking breaking down takes place when our body uh, rbc level decreases so the body having the oxygen carrying capacity and also the partial pressure of oxygen within the blood is decreases so this give a signal to the kidney so when it move through the kidney with partial pressure of oxygen is reduced is uh, very low so the pressure by the when the blood go to the kidney if there is the partial pressure of the oxygen is very low then give a signal to the kidney and the kidney secrete more and more erythropoietin so that is one of the hormone uh, that is secreted by the kidney and this erythropoietin helps erythropoietin that trigger the trigger the uh, trigger for the erythropoiesis process so there in the pro erythrobat some of the receptors are present so when the erythropoietin hormone is come out from the uh, kidney then the this the, the receptors that is present in the erythrobat that receive the erythropoietin so there is number of growth of the rbc is hyperplasia that is called hyperplasia so the number of rbcs are formed so that uh, uh, if oxygen pressure uh, partial pressure of the oxygen is reduced and that is that is detected by the kidney and kidney increase the secretion of the erythropoietin so the if erythropoietin is more and more secret then it helps in products production of more and more rbc this is all the normal way our body is doing that but when there is disease condition as you did in you know, autoimmune disease so that in that case our body mistakenly uh, break down the rbc because our immune system fight against a foreign particle but is in here there is the mistaken by uh, mistaken of the healthy rbc and the break the hemolysis occur and bone marrow if bone marrow is not competent it cannot uh, produce the rbc so if in this few causes the hemolysis occur so the hemolysis the hemolysis is a, again the consequence of hemolysis is divided into two types one is the intravascular that is the hemolysis that takes place within the blood vessels and another is extravascular that is other than the blood vessels so in extravascular 
so when there is a macrophages are present in our blood so macrophages are the white blood cells okay and they have macro macrophage means eating so that has uh, more and more envelope otherwise they eat the damaged uh, rbc uh, healthy in healthy case but in here in a hem in the disease condition they break down our the rbc and the rbc again break down to form rbc when it's break down then it's break into hemo plus globin so it is hemo and globin so rbc when hemoglobin is break down then what form then hemo is arises and one and globin will be so globin is the but is a protein okay and again this globin uh, divided into the amino acids and uh, this amino acids are stored in our blood and the iron hemo uh, again hemo is made of two part that is the iron and the porphyrin por protoporphyrin porphyrin so the iron that is that iron cannot move alone so it's bind with the transparent and is stored in the liver in the form of ferritin next we see what about the protoporphyrin so protoporphyrin that break down and gives bilirubin okay and this bilirubins that's come to the blood and it is in unconjugated form because it is uh, when it goes in the blood it is not soluble in the uh, soluble and that is called unconjugated blood when the blood when it go to the blood and after uh, uh, for the conjugations it's moved to the liver so uh, by the uh, by the uh, when it's move in the blood vessels it's bind to the albumin and then from the from uh, for uh, again is go to the liver the in, in liver there is uh, conjugation processes takes place and after conjugations then the uh, that is secret stored in the form of bile to the stomach and again in the uh, the conjugated that is the conjugated bilirubin that is uh, secreted for the uh, in the form of bile in our blood intestine and the intestines break down the bilirubin Uh, now this uh, this is conjugated bilirubin so bilirubin into urobilirubin and the stack and the uh, uh, and the uh, starco bilirubin so the starco bilirubin that is eliminated in our body in the form of fecal matter and the urobilirubin again absorb is went to the uh, kidney and uh, in kidney it is again purified and uh, urobilinogen you do not urobilinogen that is moved uh, in the form in the urine through, from the kidney so one thing is that the unconjugated jaundice as we discussed that there is a sign and symptom that is a jaundice is occur due to this unconjugated bilirubin so it is report is not soluble so it is present in our body and it's only seen in the nail blades clear up the eye so that it's a uh, move uh, more uh, uh, it's uh, it's deposit in under the skin and so our yellow skin yellow uh, coloration of the skin uh, skin of the nail blades sclera and that is called the condition that is called jaundice so it is the sign and symptom that is we find in hemolytic anemia again what happen in the intravascular so intravascular within the blood vessels so within the blood vessel this is the breaking down that is take place within the blood vessels when the rbcs are break down lysis is occur then the free many of the free hemoglobins are free and moving in the blood so when the blood uh, blood the carrying the free hemoglobin that condition is called hemoglobinopnia mia means blood so the presence of hemoglobin in the blood is called the hemoglobinopnia so this hemoglobin in our uh, in excess if it is a excess that is toxic our body it's uh, so they took uh, took uh, took bind them so, so one of the heptoplasma protein that is a heptoglobin that is from the liver that is come out and this bind the hemoglobin so pre hemoglobin that is present in the blood when they bind with the heptoglobin and bind with the free hemoglobin that is present in the blood then form a complex okay and this complex uh, by binding this don't allow by making this uh, uh, this complex uh, so that it can uh, it has the bad effect on the kidney so the heptoglobin try to uh, try to form the, the try to uh, co combine the hemoglobin so to form a complex but if hemolysis is more more hem free hemoglobin in the blood 
present in the blood so the heptaglobin is not capable to bind all the free hemoglobin so in that case if you go for a, a investigation then the plasma plasma if uh, test laboratory test the plasma of the heptoglobin uh, in the serum test we find that is reduced means it is uh, less uh, present in the uh, blood examination it will find so the, again this uh, hemolations uh, after hemolation the tetrameric structure they form the dimer structure the hemoglobin and this dimer structure that move to the uh, when the complex uh, a complex form and the dimer structure that move uh, circulate in the kidney so in kidney what happens they deposit iron inside the wall of the kidney that is the proximal convoluted tube and the, in the proximal when it is deposit it uh, form a uh, slugged inside the proximal convoluted tube so that condition when the iron is more deposited that is called the hemospider hemocider uh, and this hemocider when present uh, will find on the examinations if you go for the urine examination then you find the hemociders that is present in the urine so this is an indications this is the indication that we know that uh, it is intravascular hemolytic process but hemoglobinomia that also be one of the indications but hemoglobinomia it's uh, it's arises uh, it arises uh, for one two days but he he hemociders that will be present for one week so the investigation will catch uh, from this uh, hemocider uh, uh, cider that is we will find in the urine that is the one of the indications of the uh, that uh, confirm that it is a intravascular uh, hemolytic anemia. So, do two things are there in extravascular the conjugation uh, unconjugated bilirubin increases that leads to a condition that is the jaundice and in the, uh, in the in intravascular that is the hemospiderneuria means uh, in the urine we will find the more and more the store iron blood present so that is that is the indication of intravascular hemolytic process so this is the consequence that is carried out if our body is any cause or any uh, interesting fa interesting factor or the uh, any cause then this uh, hemolysis takes place so the treatment is so treatment uh, one is to provide supplement of uh, iron, folic acid, vitamin B complex because these are very much required for the formation of RBC in the bone marrow. So, if you supply more and more uh, iron, folic acids and the B vitamin B complex so that our bone marrow can capable to produce lower the amount of uh, RBC. First, second one blood transfusion will be in severe cases, in the chronic cases there is blood transfusion will be done. And Sometimes corticosteroids, this is very, uh, the, this are the one uh, drug uh, that is used in the uh, hemolytic anemia and intravenous, uh, we can provide also intravenous immunoglobin to the uh, body, to the body if the patient suffer with the hemolytic anemia. So, this is the treatment of hemolytic anemia. Hope you understand the, uh, the, the what is the going on inside the body. So, in hemolytic, how the re re destruction of the RBC is more, but uh, our body is then mechanism. It can neutralize, it can keep balance, equilibrium between the destruction and the, uh, and the productions. But when this sum of the disease condition arises in our body, then the lysis or the breaking down of the RBC before 120 days means it is premature uh, breakdown of the RBC takes place so that some the anemic condition will arise and that is called hemolytic anemia this is all about hemolytic anemia hope you understand this topic and uh, please subscribe my channel thank you for watching